Vicky, absolutely lovely to see you. Thank you for coming along and having a bit of a chat with us. Um, how are you going with coronavirus and isolation and everything at the moment? Well, not much has changed really out in, in my general lifestyle because, you know, we just sort of work at home all the time anyway. So, but I guess, you know, I've changed a few things like getting online shopping and things like that because Michael's an asthmatic and so I'm being super, super careful about um, surfaces and everything. So oh, yeah, we're basically yeah. staying at home as much as possible. And then when the shopping comes, I wash it all before it comes inside. And yeah, because I just, you know, it's, it's scary. And we had a big, we had quite a big, um, a bit, the peninsula was a bit of a hot spot at first. It is scary. Days. And what about art materials and things? Are you ordering them online now too? Or well, not? I get them online anyway because by the time I get to an art shop, you know, it's cost me in probably another twenty dollars in petrol anyway, okay, and enough. they may not have what I want. So, you know, it's easier for me to order things online that way anyway. Yes, because you um, order beautiful, beautiful materials like you use rosemary paint brushes, don't you? I have an addiction to rosemary brushes. <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit about your background in becoming an artist. When was it and what led up to you being able to say, I am an artist? Because I remember that quite, mm. quite a, you know, as a memorable moment for myself, giving yourself that permission. Ah, yes. Well, gee, I, I started off, um, I've always done art from a child. My grandmother was very nurturing of that. And she always said, if a child is interested in something, nurture it or foster it. And so we were always encouraged to follow our interests. And that was always a big interest of mine. And so when I got to about form four, which is, I'm not sure what year you call that, but it's when I was about 16, I heard about, a course in Frankston which was um, basically part you did English and social studies and all your other subjects were art so it was TOP oh. I think oh, so I went right. off and TOP, yeah, I TOP. Yeah. so I went off and did that and so I learned photography printmaking pottery sculpture oh, wow. drawing Fantastic. graphics the whole it was so great for two years and English and social studies so Ah, oh, that sounds like heaven. Here I was doing boring old HSC, which was yeah. called back then HSC. I don't know why they changed the name of it, but they do that, don't they? So anyway. Yeah, well, I'm really glad my parents let me do it because, it, you know, it was so fun to go and learn all those different mediums and, and things. And then you had to sort of choose what you wanted to major in. And really, I always wanted to major in painting, but realism was really discouraged at university then. Mm, yes, and it's it only sort of, recently that that started to change, isn't it? It's changed in a big way, but not not so much in Australia, but definitely in Europe and America and yeah. in other places in the world. It's going great guns, but I think we're about 20 years behind here. I know. It's all right. You can lead the way, Vicky. I'll, I'll come along with you. We'll go <laughs> we on a can. journey and just, and yeah, just say, hey, look, real, realism rocks, baby. So, well, you know, I think just once Australia sort of catches up with the rest of the world, that would that will be nice. Um, so what I ended up doing, because I was so discouraged from painting realism, I ended up becoming a potter. And so ah, I did pottery. I okay. And then I became a silk painter and painted on material and made clothes. And that was just when the children were little and, you know, it was just bread and butter money. Yeah, okay. Basically. So I did a, a market at the Victorian Arts Centre for nine years. Wow. Well, I never of course, want to do another market. <laughs> okay, um, but your love of uh, silk and material feeds into your painting, though, because quite often you'll have this l luxurious and, and luscious cloth. Yes, I your love life. fabric. Yeah, or you yeah. can tell, and and you paint it very well as well. It's just it's luscious is the word for the fabric that you paint. It's very yeah. very rich. Those colours that you get, it's quite lovely. Um, so okay, so it was an interesting sort of almost going in the direction, but sort of like you were being pointed and nudged a little bit along the way. Yes, and then I and then I when 
the kids were getting a little bit older and while I was still silk painting, I found the McClellan Guild of Artists in Langwarren. Okay. And I went and studied there with Brian Armstrong for about four years. And he was a, he's a realist landscape painter. Okay. And so, so were you painting landscapes back then? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. He was a great teacher. And then, but then he got sick and he left the area. So I was sort of... Uh, lost for a while, not not making any headway, and not, you know, it sort of only just begun. Four years isn't a long time. Yeah. And then later, I found Fiona Bilber and studied with her for another few years, and then I saved up and went to Europe, and I saw a painting um, done by someone at the Florence Academy, and I spoke to the gallery owner, and she said, "Oh yes, this." This is um, Ramiro Sanchez and he studied at the Florence Academy and I thought, what's that, you know? And I went home and Googled it and it was like my my dream school. Where you could, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I thought, oh my goodness, if only I could do that. And so I came home and I started saving up to go and then I spoke to another friend um, who I met at the Shirley Hannon Portrait Prize, Marcus Callum. And he said, well, why, why are you going there? Why aren't you going to Angel Academy? And I said, oh, I've never heard of that. And um, so I looked at Angel Academy as well. And I actually liked um, that place that seemed to suit me better because it was a smaller school. And what I didn't know is that at Angel Academy, they teach comparative measuring as well as site size. Okay. Most of the other academies only teach site size, which is a great tool, but it's nice to have comparative measuring under your belt as well because it gives you more options. I think so. I think people, you think that you sort of, it's a bit of an instinctual thing to the comparative measuring. Anyway, just as an artist, when you're looking at something, you're always saying, how does, you know, what what is that compared to that sort of thing yes um so yes. yeah interesting because uh, i was gonna i've not really known the differences between the two academies so that's really interesting to hear that so so any yes. other differences that you're aware of obviously size i think they all sort of feet um sort of feature on different things i think um angel academy the main just of it angel academy is where i studied yeah yeah um, and and so their main sort of um emphasis is on gesture so okay. um yeah so gesture is sort of the the basis movement. it gives a lot of the, movement and, and action yeah. to the energy to the piece yes and yeah. then i think uh florence academy is very much um I, I don't know myself but someone who's who went to both said that they learned brushwork at florence academy okay so, oh, the, so that also sounds good. I like to do both. Yes, really? yeah. I know you need to go to all of them. <laughs> and then the so Russian well. Academy. Oh, there's a Russian one. There's a Russian one. And they oh, their thing is mainly on, from what I understand, is mainly sort of about anatomy. So that's their sort of main okay. emphasis. So these are sort of things that I think are different. And you can see in each of the students' work. So the Russians are sort of, whereas the the... Angel Academy, the poses are more graceful. The Russian academies are very accurate, but very sort of, in a, can be a little stiffer sort of than yeah. the gestural, because maybe at Angel you learn to sort of push that gesture a little bit further. Yeah, okay. That's and, very interesting. And in your, in your classes, would there be something that has been said or taught to you that you feel has been um, really influential in your art? You know, something from um, one of your teachers i can hear maestro john angel's voice in my head saying turn the form and soften the edges <laughs> ah, okay so turn and the that form. yeah turn the form as in make it round make it three-dimensional you yeah. know if you think of a sphere and you base everything on the way the light falls as if it's a sphere as if it's a round three-dimensional thing yeah you have to constantly keep that in your mind so that you don't get flat flat images and i think coming from australia there's a very big emphasis on non-turned form so a lot of the yeah. paint is very flat yeah. um, it's a it's a sort of movement in a way a style a stylized flatness whereas at the academies you, you you are learning to turn form that's a major part of it and that's what gives things three dimensions 
Oh, absolutely. So yes, I mean, I know often if I'm teaching with anybody, child, adult, whoever, um, when they if they want to do realism, the first thing I'll say is it's it's the shading. That's that's what'll give it to you. You know, you, yeah, the tonal values. Draw a circle. It's flat. Put the tonal values in. It's three D. It's that yes. simple. And it's that simple, you know, obviously there is nuance and, and there's more things that you can learn. But from the very, very yes. basic point of view, it's, it doesn't matter what the shape is, it's that shading that gives it its definition and its form, which is all, always delightful to watch when you're painting yourself happen. Just, it is, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's a bit like magic. It is a little bit, isn't it? I love yeah. it. The moment where it sort of clicks in and you go, oh. Well, I remember, you know, seeing realist paintings in the past and not having any of that training as a child and thinking, how did, how did they do that? You yeah. know, that, I thought it was magic the way they did it, you know, and, but it's actually a process and you can learn to do it, which is even more magical. Which is even more magical, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, exactly right. It's exciting when you know that you can learn to do it and also share that information too, which is really quite lovely, which you've just done with us, which is so kind of you and generous of you. But, but I also think, I think the main thing that a teacher can do is be encouraging. Yeah. The, yeah. I reckon that's point number one, isn't it? I know one of the nicest things that I ever heard from um, a, a parent of a student who was a kid when I was teaching them was that the main thing they learned from my classes, I clearly wasn't teaching much art, the main thing they learned <laughs> from my classes was to feel good about themselves. And I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that's right. Yeah. yeah so, it's a basic thing, isn't it? It is a basic thing. It's a very important thing too. And I've heard of a few painting teachers where people have run out of their class crying and oh yeah, yeah. So nice. and i just think what are you thinking you know so what stories you hear where people get the slap with the ruler across their knuckles oh, and told really i haven't heard that one <laughs> i've heard a few people yeah and that they're just they draw uh, or paint and i just think for goodness sake because as we know it is a learnt skill and that um, yeah i would never go to a class with someone who was like you know not positive and encouraging i just no. wouldn't I would never do it. No, I agree. I absolutely agree. Vicky, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and uh, we're going, you know, we'll be showing some of your artwork. And if anybody wants to get in touch with you, what's your website address? Ah, www.vickysullivan.com and it's Vicky, V-I-C-K-I. So yeah, Vicky Sullivan with a double L. And, um, and you also do beautiful portrait commissions, I know. So anybody who wants a, a portrait commission, you're a definite go-to person. So Thanks, Jack, beautiful. as are you. Yes, as <laughs> yes, we both are. It's what we share. It's, it's a lovely bond that we both have. So, yeah, thank you. All right, Vicky, enjoy your day. I'll get you, let thank you get you, back. Jack. Thank you, Thank you. Ciao.